my Budge Rover Boyo. Hi, uh, this week we're gonna do the anatomy of the mandible, which should be fairly straightforward. Somebody mentioned it in a comment, I thought, oh, it's a good idea, mandible. Pretty sure we've already done the TMJ, the temporomandibular joint. I can't remember if we've done the muscles of mastication or not, but today we're just going to look at the bony parts of the mandible. So that means we'll consider the mandible as a whole, we consider, you know, the major shape of it, the lumps and bumps, the sticky outy bits. Um, we'll talk about the foramina and the stuff that runs through them, the teeth, well, you know, how the teeth attach, that sort of thing. There are lots of little bits of detail to the mandible, you know, little, little scallops, little lumpy bits where muscles attach. I might go into a bit more detail and mention a couple of those, but probably not, not terribly interesting or useful. If you're really interested in advanced anatomy, you're probably not going to get it from YouTube videos. The mandible is typically described as part of the viscerocranium. <laughs> which means that screwdriver, there we go, um, screwdrivered. So the, the mandible is described as part of the viscerocranium, the viscerocranium being the bones of the face um, and the bones of the, the cranial cavity being the bones of the neurocranium. Um, the mandible is U-shaped and uh, interestingly enough, it, it forms through a process called intramembranous ossification. Most of the bones in the body form through endochondral ossification, where you have a cartilaginous precursor that gets turned into bone. Um, with intramembranous ossification, um, the bone just forms. <laughs> if, um, kind of a bit more directly, without, basically without a cartilaginous precursor. Funnily enough, there is like um, Meckel's cartilage is the embryonic start. There's, a, there's like a template for the mandible, but that doesn't become the mandible. Bone forms directly around it to form the mandible. Anyway, side topic, offshoot. Um, the mandible is forming the, the chin and it forms the jawline and it articulates at the temporomandibular joint uh, and it holds the mandibular teeth. The nerves for the mandibular teeth are going to run within the mandible, as are the blood vessels, and some sensory nerves are going to run out to the chin. So the major parts of the mandible then, um, we have the body of the mandible here. This is the ramus. The ramus is a branch, rami. Um, so this is like a tree branch, so ramus and the body, and where the ramus and the body meet, this is the angle of the mandible. And then up here we have two processes. Now this one, that's the one that articulates at the temporomandibular joint, right? So because that one is the articulating one, that is the condyle, or the condyloid process, and it has a neck, which is the thin bit leading up to the head, of the condyloid process. So that's the articulating surface, that's the, the sliding hinge of the temporomandibular joint. So this here, this is the coronoid process, and the coronoid process is there as an attachment for the masseter muscle. So masseter is up here and it runs through that gap there, which we talked through a few weeks, talked about a few weeks ago, to insert into the coronoid process. And by doing that, it's anterior to the hinge joint, so it has an advantage of leverage. It's already a powerful biting muscle. Putting it there makes it even more powerful. And in really powerfully biting animals, they have even more attachment points and a bigger muscle. And that's why they can bite so hard, right? So the coronoid process being anterior to the joint gives a mechanical advantage. So those are the two main processes up there, ramus angle body. Now where we find the teeth, somebody brought this up watching these videos actually, I was wondering what is alveolar, why are they called alveolar? This is the alveolar part, the alveolar crest of the mandible, that's where the teeth are embedded. 
is because an alveolus in Latin is like, um, is like a pit. If you take the teeth out, that's what you've got. You've got a pit. So the alveoli in the lungs, those are those spaces, that same sort of shape of spaces, if you use your imagination. So this is the alveolar part of the mandible here, bearing the teeth. Now the ramus has some shape to it. It's got some lumpy bits. You know what it's like? Whenever we see lumpy bits on bone or ridges or grooves, something's going on there. If we've got a ridge or a lump, there's a muscle attachment. And masseter is going to attach out here. Um, the medial pterygoids, we talked about those the other day, didn't we? When we were talking about the uh, infratemporal fossa. These are going to attach on the other side. So there are a number of nice ridgy bits where we have muscle attachments. But let's not worry about naming them all. This here is the mental protuberance. In Latin, mentum refers to the chin, literally. So the, the mental protuberance, nothing to do with your mind, it's just, it's literally chin. So mental things around here are just chin things. Um, mens, mens means mind, I think in Latin, hence mental. That's what, but yeah, mental protuberance. And if you want a bit more chin, the width of the chin here, there's a couple of pointy outy bits here and here. These are the, the mental tubercles. So really are forming the, the, the chin. Yeah, anyway, mental tubercles here and here. And there's a faint ridge. <coughs> there's a faint ridge here, which is in mandibular symphysis. You know, symphysis, we have those like the pubic symphysis, these are in the midline. So the mandibular symphysis describes kind of the two halves of the mandible meeting to form that complete U. Really popular at the moment. Not with YouTube, <coughs> but with students, because we've had exams and they all want to talk to me individually. Find out what happened to their exam papers. Oh, my voice is a bit worn out. Anywho, what about the parts of the alveolar bed? Um, so the dental, a dental alveolus is like one hollow that the root of a tooth will go into and in between those delta, dental alveoli will have like interalveolar septa, you know, a septum being a wall, but yeah, alveolar bed, alveolar part of the mandible, whatever you want to call it. Um, oh, now that's quite a nice ridge on this side. Now the, the ridge here and here, these are quite pronounced and prominent and these are the attachment points of the mylohyoid muscle. So the mylohyoid muscle is like, you know, it's a flat muscle forming the floor of the oral cavity and that's where it attaches, so that sticks out. Um, there's a mylohyoid ridge on either side. And now we're in here, you can see, you can see this. Here's the fun bit. Now all those terms we've been talking about, we can pull them all together. <laughs> okay, so this is the mandibular foramen. Uh, this is a plastic skull. So if I stick my pipe cleaner in, don't think it's really gonna go very far. But the mandibular foramen leads into the mandibular canal. So there's a canal running through the bone here. Um, and through that mandibular foramen, the mandibular canal run the inferior alveolar nerve and artery. So the inferior alveolar nerve, alveolar, is going to supply or carry sensory innervation back from the teeth. The superior alveolar nerve does the upper teeth in the maxilla. So the inferior alveolar nerve runs into there, does that, and then it runs through that canal, does its job in the teeth, and it pops out here. This is the mental foramen in the chin. Can we think of, hmm, mental thinking, thinking man pose, mental, mental, maybe, mental, I don't know, whatever works, right? Um, so mental foramen, so that inferior alveolar nerve actually leaves through here as the mental nerve and the artery leaves as the mental artery and at that point the mental nerve is carrying sensory innovation back from the chin, supplying blood to the chin. So what cranial nerve is doing that then? The major sensory nerve of the face is the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve five. Uh, and of course, we're, we're down here in the mandible. So that means that the mandibular branch 
of the trigeminal nerve gives off the inferior alveolar nerve that runs through the mandibular foramen into the mandibular canal, carries sensory innervation back from the teeth, pops out through the mental foramen as the mental nerve, collecting sensory information with this area here. Isn't that neat? So that's what that's all about. That's what the holes are. They're joined up. Is there anything I can, else I can say about the mandible that's worth knowing? Not really. I mean, we can talk about there are little depressions where muscles attach, like the pterygoid muscle and muscles of the tongue and digastery. But no, no, that's, that's all you need to know. That's more than you need to know. The mandible, all right? As usual, I shortchanged the veins. Apologies to all the veins out there, but of course the inferior alveolar vein also runs through there. Sorry, we talk about arteries, we're a bit lazy with veins, but there you go. Um, okay, mandible. See you guys next time.